Okay, so we're going to create a Slatsa holder manufactured by Meritool. And if you want to follow along, you can come to Meritool.com here and go to their tool holders. And what I'm going to be doing here is just under Cat 40, it's down here, the slitting saw arbor holders. So the step files are listed here under each product. So you can download them directly to your hard drive. And this is the three quarter inch. It's this one here that I'm going to be doing. Uh, but you know, any of these, they're pretty much going to be approximately the same. So switching back to a spree, this is the way the holder looks when you bring it right into the Esprit TNG interface. So if you hit F7, which is the top view, um, you are going to see the holder is oriented along the x-axis. And if you've been watching any of the previous tutorials, you'll know that we need the holder to align along the z-axis. So what we're going to do first is uh, probably the first thing that we want to do is actually position this in the correct location so that uh, the reference point for the milling spindle is in the correct spot. And that's going to be right here at the base of the taper. So the easiest way that I found to do this is to go to a clear view and come to manipulation and we're going to pick move origin and when I click on that because we're in clear view it sees the center of these uh, you know edges here so we have this circular edge that defines the bottom of the taper and we can see the highlight to the center I'm just going to go ahead and click and snap and when I go back to a shaded view we can see that the holder is now positioned uh, with the, the P0, the zero point at the center of the bottom of the taper. So now we're going to go ahead and rotate this basically about the y-axis 90 degrees. So what I can do is right click and say select all and then right click again using copy. I'm going to pick rotate move say 90 degrees. I'm going to uncheck the use origin for rotation I'm going to say OK and then I'm going to pick the y-axis and now we're looking at it from a top-down view and we are about the uh, the z-axis since that's coming in and out of the screen and that's what we want so the next thing that I want to do I'm going to hit F4 on my keyboard F4 and that is going to position this in a front view and we see our z-axis is going up into the spindle which is what we want and we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at this real quick i'm going to just select this and we can see that this tool holder this slitting saw arbor tool holder is actually comprised of several different solids and what we want to do is define our tool location to be basically at this face here. So again, F4, we're going to come to the manipulation, modify work plane. I'm going to click on that. And then I'm just going to pick the Z axis. You could see the Z axis highlights when I move my, my mouse on top of it. So when I click here, the Z axis is now going to move along the z-axis only to wherever I want. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and pick one of these edge points here along this front face. It doesn't matter which one because the the UVW is only going to move along the z -axis. So we're basically only picking a new z-value. So we're going to go ahead and pick this one and now when I rotate you could see that it maintains its position along the z-axis. It just moves it to a new Z position. And here, I'm going to go ahead and 
create the TA underscore one, which is tool adapter position one. I'll hit enter. And then here I'm going to go ahead and do an HA one. And that's an, that's a holder adapter position. And the reason for that is, you know, when we, in real life, when we put our saw here and we screw the cap screw down, this is, you know, going to vary in thickness. So what we want to do is create a separate holder for this component that will be loaded onto this component. And we'll see when we assemble the tool in a moment. So because I have these and they're really associated to the solid, what I want to do is I want to highlight this solid only. And if uh, just, just to make sure that everybody is able to do this. So you want to make sure that you, you have that this under solids on the first you have this selection filter, this first icon here. When you click on that, you have this solids area, solid bodies area. And you want to make sure that this first icon is activated. So we come here. We're going to grab this solid model. Make sure that only this solid model is highlighted. Okay, so these two should not be highlighted. And we're going to come to File, Save As. And we're going to go ahead and save this as the same file name. We're going to pick Holder Files. And then I'm going to paste the file name here. And you can see I've done a couple of them. I'm going to say OK. And that saves this as my holder body. But now what I want to do, because my UVW TAHA are located here at the front center, this is the reference point, and now I need to pick a reference point on this assembly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that right here at the base of this, um, you know, this face here. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, and actually, we don't need this anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and just delete this. And this way, uh, we can take a look at this a little bit more easily. So this is the face that I'm talking about, because when this is up against the primary holder, I'll call it, uh, there's nothing in there. There's no saw loaded. So what we would do is we would create our slitting saw. And then when we put this onto the, as a, as a adapter, we're just going to shift it along the Z axis by the same value of the thickness of our saw. So we want the center here to be located at, at P0 right here. So what command do we want to do uh, to use to do this? Uh, we're going to come to manipulation again and move origin. So this is the easiest way. I'm going to come in here. And again, you know, we want to be in a clear view, this type icon here. And I'm going to zoom in. And you could see that when I move my mouse over, you know, to the center, it highlights, you know, this face that I was, that I had highlighted earlier in green. So I just want to make sure that I have that center indication and then I'm going to click and we'll go back to shaded view so we could see it. And I'll hit F4 and when you zoom in you could see that this uh, axis for the XY axis is lined up exactly with the back of that chamfer. And that's what we want. So uh, what we want to do now is actually just delete these. So we're going to go ahead and click on those and hit the delete key. And now we can see that this component, this, uh, you know, cap screw assembly or whatever you want to call it, is sitting where we want. So when we load this, it will appear at the face of the holder, you know, with this point at the face of that holder. So now we don't need to highlight anything because there's two solids. I mean, you could highlight everything and save it, but just click away, make sure nothing is highlighted, and then come here to File save as we're going to do the same thing holder file and you know you could pick the the name in the list if you wanted or i had it already copied uh, so i'm going to just uh, replace the rev one with cap so that 
they go together. You could see these two here go together and these two here go together. So I replace that with cap. I'm going to save it and now we can go to the machine. So under the home tab here, you have the machine setup and you could load in a machine that you have or one of the sample machines. Uh, so under data machines, you know, you, you are definitely going to have the samples here. You could pick, uh, you know, a milling. Well, let's go ahead and just do that, I guess. So, uh, people that are following, I'll just, I'll just load the medium mill. Give that a second to load. And we could see our spindle here. I'll just rotate this a little bit. Zoom in. And I don't know what the spindle is, but these are Cat 40 tools, so we'll see how they look. I'm going to say OK. And then you want to have your tool assemblies active. So if you don't, uh, you want to go to Show Hide here under Home, Home Show Hide, and make sure that you have tool assemblies checked. So under the Tool Assemblies tab, you're going to come to Station 1 and right-click and say add adaptive item and here uh, we have the two items here so we have our holder and if you're wondering where this box came from uh, under windows you have a, a preview icon right here which is nice because for all these GDMLs that we make we can get the preview before we load it into a spree so visually I can kind of just get a confirmation there that I'm loading the correct product. So I'm going to grab that uh, 750, and, and you can see here the preview for the cap screw as well. I'm going to pick the, the 750 holder, bring it in, and then at the end here, uh, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to right-click and say add a milling tool, and here we'll pick the slot mill. So here under the slot mill, you'll see that... Uh, I guess, you know, the naming convention and stuff, really, we don't care about. But it appears right at that face. And how is that happening? So basically, you know, when you define your slot mill, depending on what you pick, uh, you know, your diameter here, maybe that's a little bit big for this. So we'll pick a two-inch diameter. Tool thickness is one-eighth. You know, you could set a radius here. Uh, you know, you know that's simulation there. Shank diameter, whatever. Uh, this, since this is sitting inside of the shank or inside of the tool holder, I should say, you're not even going to see it. Um, basically, the tool length one eighth here on the on this uh, tab right here that looks like a tool holder. We want to set extension diameter to zero and overall length to be the same value as the tool length. If I set my overall length to let's say one inch you'll see that my tool shifts to be at the end of the tool is going to be one inch from here, but we don't want that. We want that overall length to be the same. So we're going to set that to that. Uh, that's a one eighth thickness tool. And then under the holder here, we're going to right click on the holder, not the tool on the holder. We're going to say add an adaptive item because we created that HA underscore one and I'm going to pick that cap screw assembly. And now when I say OK, you see it appear. And again, it references that uh, the face of the, the main holder body. So here's our shift values to translate X, Y, and Z. So here I want to put in a negative 0.125. And you see that the cap screw, let me, I'll, I'll put negative 0.5 just to see it there. So we can see there's our cap screw assembly. And uh, if I just put in 125 here, you can see that that is going to be placed exactly with the back of that up against the tool. So, you know, it takes only a few extra seconds to define the two as a separate holder component. And, you know, uh, I guess a few extra seconds to load the adaptive item onto the tool, but it gives you better collision checking. If we didn't do this, this cap screw assembly would be placed wherever the default location was under the uh, step model that we loaded in. 
So this way, depending on the thickness of our basically disc, uh, you know, we can set it right up against that and have it like it would be in real life. And there you have it. So hopefully this will help you guys create uh, more accurate digital twin simulations for collision checking and send more confident NC code programs to the floor.